All right, welcome back everybody. Our final session today is about complementary efforts. We've been hearing a lot about the great things that 4C has been doing, but it's important to remember that we're one small piece of an enormous global community of scientists who have come together over the last couple of years to study this pandemic. Uh, last year, I created this website, for my team called covidauthors.org, financially supported by um, Dell um, Foundation, we'll hear about later, and Harvard Catalyst. It takes publications from PubMed that have, are about COVID and loads it into this website and takes all the distinct authors from those publications and creates an online profile for them. So you can see who are the different kinds of people who are working together to address COVID. Um, as of now, this website has 174,000 COVID publications and over 600,000 author profiles. Um, over over half a million scientists around the world are doing this. this is, me, I was never an infectious disease researcher, but I have skills with databases and EHR, which made it relevant for this research. And it shows me the different fields that I work in and the different international collaborations that I have studying COVID. I'm gonna take a, just a couple of minutes to introduce some of these um, large efforts, and then we'll hear in depth about some of them later in this session. Um, accrual to Clinical Trials, the ACT Network. This is a real-time querying network that leverages I2B2 and a program called the Shared Health Research Informatics Network, network called SHRINE, which connects I2B2s in a federated network um, across 48 CCSA sites representing data on 125 million patients. More importantly, I think, though, is that it already had a community of actively engaged informatics and EHR data experts as well as an ontology with over a million concepts that was very rapidly pivoting towards um, COVID-19 and all the new concepts related to that. So when we launched 4C, this was already in place and we were able to, as Zach mentioned in his introduction at the beginning of this, leverage that community as well as other ITP2 sites around the world. And this is what helped us get started. I think the thing that's actually closest and sort of structure to 4C might be Odyssey, the Observational Health Data Science Informatics, Consortia, which you'll hear about very soon. Um, it's similar to I4C in that it's a federated approach where analyses are sent out to sites where experts at the sites can run the data locally and share aggregate information. Um, they had a paper in Nature Communication just about the exact same time 4C had our paper in Nature Digital Medicine. Um, 4C focused on laboratory tests. They focused on diagnoses, very kind of complementary types of um, work. Griffin, you have two minutes. Yes, the N3C collaborative um, aggregates data from lots of different consortia into a central secure repository. And the benefits of that is that with a central database that makes machine learning and artificial intelligence easier to run, though there are institutions that are um, cautious about um, sharing the data either because of privacy concerns or just not allowed to because of various reasons. And we'll hear about Recover, which is the big NIH half a billion dollar initiative to do an actual clinical trial a prospective study on EHR data um, and using EHR data mobile health autopsies to study COVID. Then finally, when I look at these publications in PubMed, there are actually 4,564 different consortia listed. Um, so you know, we're gonna be talking about a few today, but again, it's a, a tiny uh, a drop in the bucket compared to all the different groups that are out there that have come together. Um, I mentioned 4C, Odyssey, and N3C. Zach mentioned some of the work you can do places like the UK where you have a national healthcare system. They actually have another 4C, the Coronavirus Clinical Characterization Consortium and a COVID-19 Genomics Consortium. There are commercial entities like Trinetics and national governmental groups such as the CDC Response Team and the Australian Government Department of Health. These numbers next to my very unscientific estimate of the number of publications each of these can have in PubMed. Each of these large consortia are able to generate a few dozen publications. These are all very high impact, highly cited publications. So it's a little bit skewing the numbers, but just compare what I'm showing here on the slide to the 174,000 publications that have been written about COVID and kind of gets a sense of how big the scale is that we're talking about. So with that, I'll stop and I'll switch over to um, some of the individual um, groups here are gonna be talking about either ways of being other approaches to getting access to COVID data or different consortia and how they've been addressing this problem. <laughs> 